Hello, I want to talk about just basic comparator operations that you'd see um, in a standard sort of IC process, particularly when you see this in CMOS. And so then the question is, well, what does a comparator look like? And it's very simple functionality. What you would see is you would have a device that usually, you know, it's an amplifier of a sort where you have two inputs and you want to just compare the two inputs. And if one input is bigger than the other, then I, you know, the positive terminal it means that the output will go to say the highest power supply rail, and if the and if it is actually less than the other one, then I would expect it to be ground. So this very much gives me a way to say, okay, is one bigger than another, and I can compare. And then there's always some interesting intermediate region, and we kind of see what happens in there, and that gets sort of uncertain, uncertain either because of there's a gain, and so there's terms in between or it's uncertain because there's some places like in terms of timing that are uns that are not clear. And so anytime you look at it in a comparator, it's not just a question of that device itself, which could just be an op amp, it could be a number of things, but it's also a question of, you know, I have a capacitance on that node and what does that timing do to the overall structure? And we're gonna typically talk about this as saying I've got an input um, with some additional voltage over it, I'm going to often think about this as a, as a maybe at least significant bit. Comparators are heavily used when I talk about analog to digital converters, so you'll often see this as a, as a way to people think about it. And so really what it's going to, we're going to be asking a lot of questions is, well, what's the time required to measure a small difference? In this case, a, a least significant uh, bit or a voltage that maybe you think is the least significant bit, or at least some delta or some change. And, and you can think about this interchangeably. Clearly there's some sort of common voltage between the two of them, and in a true comparator, that common voltage should be able to operate over a wide range and still be able to show I'm getting a reasonable comparison between the two. So now you might imagine, well, how would I think about this in different cases? And one way to think about it is, well, imagine I have sort of a typical transconductance amplifier. And certainly that's a reasonable way to imagine uh, things to work and you're almost thinking I've got a sort of infinite output resistance so the gain is not my problem. Obviously if I have a finite amount of gain that also will limit me. But let's just think about this for a second. What are some of the issues I would run into this? Well one thing is that the current, and again we talk about the tangent, if it's a small volt level which like a typical comparison would be small, uh, I'm going to get something which is, you know, kappa I bias over 2UT is a transconductance times the two voltages the difference. Well, if I'm looking at this in the notation we used up here, that voltage is sitting right there over UT. And so there's some voltage here, but one, something to notice is the amount of current that I get to use to pull myself in one direction or another is entirely related to that small voltage is also related to the bias current, which I do have control over. But this, you know, I still have some sort of connection between these these kinds of terms. And again, remember the linearized because it's the tan h is approximately x, uh, tan h of x is approximately x. All right. So given this, now how do you proceed? Well, that means the output voltage will change from some starting point, probably sort of in the middle somewhere in an indeterminate range, you might set it there, and then it changes linearly based on those elements, but notice the size of that voltage matters. So it might work really well for one voltage, but if I go something half that size, it will take twice as long. And this is something you can kind of see in the, in the math here that, you know, I can set up a time constant. Again, you always want to try to minimize, get the highest time constant for the amount of bias current that you're using. In other words, go as fast as you can for the energy you're going to use. Um, and then I can talk about, well, you know, that time is going to be related to you know, whatever the threshold is times whatever that initial output voltage might have been, so sort of V out zero, over that LSB. And it turns out that delay is inversely proportional to the least significant bit. Hmm. So that means if I want to look at what the cost is going to be from, say, going... 8-bit converter to a 10-bit converter. That's only two bits. It's a factor of four, and my cost is actually be a factor of four.
And so one off, so there's certain places where this will work and certain places where you say, well, do I have a different option? And in that case, you often talk about things that are comparators that are latched. And you might say, well, what is that? Well, if you've looked at a typical SRAM, you have two different amplifiers that are both sort of, um, that have gain in them, but the way you couple them, you get positive feedback. And so you can kind of see this in this amplifier structure with a very, very simple approach where I might have a simple reset in there, which then kind of sets up my initial condition. But when I release that reset, then I effectively have what looks like almost positive feedback between my two structures. And that makes this really interesting because that positive feedback now leads to, leads to an interesting structure which says, oh, if I start off with something and things are close, and again, it's positive feedback in the difference between the two voltages, between VL1 and VL2, what I'm going to see is that it's going to then quickly move in a direction. The solution to these give me an e to the t over tau kind of response. And that tau, again, is CUT over cap I bias, so I still have control over it. I bias here is kind of the average of these two input currents. But here's the interesting thing of this. When I look at this, is then this tau shows up, and so it's linear in tau, no surprise there. But notice that then it's a, it's a log of the, of the LSB. So now an interesting thing happens. If I take that LS, if I have a certain comparator that's working and I need to go from say 8 bits to 12 bits, well that's a factor of 16, but that only really changes things by about a factor of 4-ish, depending on what log base I'm working with. And so things are on the log of the LSB of that particular voltage difference. And so for very, very small voltage comparators, because of the speed aspect, you often want to work with the latch comparator structure. This, of course, does mean I have to set it up. It does mean I need to clock it. It does mean I need to work through all of those options. But if I do, and, that, and my application allows it, it's a very, very useful approach. But I will say in practice, for all sorts of structures, you will see one or the other used in a range of applications. And understanding the dynamics and understanding how you want to do that design is critical for any larger system design you might build.